Believe it or not, there are kids out there who are happy to snack on carrots and broccoli. Yet others tend to gravitate toward foods that aren't quite as healthy. So why are some kids more fussy about food than others? Andrea Borichter is a speech-language pathologist who has some tips on how to help even the fussiest eater develop good eating habits. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. So when most people would think of speech and food, you wouldn't correlate those two together. So how do you do that? Yeah, so it's all done in the mouth. So speech and language pathologists can provide you with speech therapy, language therapy, but also we do a lot of feeding therapy. So why did you get started into this and start blogging about it? So I had my first child and I got really obsessed with figuring out what he should be eating when he was about five months. And I was going online and reading all these very unrealistic pieces of information. And my husband came home and said to me, you are the specialist. You know that, right? <laughs> like, maybe you should be the one sharing this information. So I started sharing information, and it's been really neat to see how many moms are looking for realistic information written by a mom and not just by a specialist that isn't actually living through what her kids are going through. A lot of the times when we're having kids, they really look at what we're doing. They like to copy what we're doing. Is yes. this true for what we eat as well? Absolutely. Um, the most interesting thing in our kids' lives are what we're doing. And I say that about cleaning. I say that about you know, eating, about talking, all of these things. So we should be modeling what we're eating for them. So when we're sitting at the table, we should all be sitting together. We should be eating out of the same bowl. I brought this bowl today because um, these plastic bowls are so great for us to pass. The kids can pass them. If they drop them, they're not going to break. They've got grippers on them. Um, and the kids see that you take it out of the bowl, so they're more likely to take it out of the bowl. Whereas if we just put a plate of food in front of them, they're, they're wondering, where did this come from? Are you eating from the same thing I'm eating from? So when they see that we're all taking it from the same dish, they're more likely to eat it. So what are some other tips for growing a healthy eater? Yeah, so a few things. Um, I like to um, have bowls that they can help you make food in. So these are these look like real glass bowls, but they're just plastic. So they don't think, oh, we're eating out of baby bowls, we're making out of baby bowls. These are real bowls that mom and dad use too, and they can help me make the food. So if I'm, um, if I'm making a salad, I might give them some of it to mix. So, oh, here's, here's some salad in a bowl. Why don't you mix this up? Um, I just made a corn, broccoli, and or not there was not broccoli in it. It was <laughs> corn, tomatoes, and cucumbers, and my kids have never had that before. And they were like, you're trying to poison us. We're sure of it. <laughs> so I had them mix it up. They did not eat it the first time. They were like, mm -mm, no, thank you. But they still experienced it. The next time, they tried it. They didn't like it, but they tried it. They spit it out into another one of these empty bowls that we leave on the table. So I let them spit it out. Um, the research shows that if we let kids try foods and spit them out, they're more likely to try them again. Whereas if they get in trouble for trying and spitting out, then they're not going to try new foods. So introducing these foods also, I feel like our taste buds change over time. I know that there's food I did not like when I was little that I love now. Is that true? How does that work? So they don't actually change. I hate to tell you. Dang um, it. <laughs> so what it really is, is we're just growing accustomed. Um, okay. You, we should always be introduced to food seven times before we really? actually like them. Um, if you think about the first time you give a baby food, they are going to play with it, maybe lick it, and shudder a little bit. Um, and after time, you give it to them multiple times, and then they start eating it. And it's the same thing with our three and four-year-olds. Give them that same food over and over and over again, and they're going to start liking it. They're going to become accustomed to it. It's going to become a natural part of their day. Uh, salads. A lot of moms say, like, oh, yeah, I make a salad with dinner every night. My kid won't even touch it. Did you put it on their plate every night? Even if they're not going to eat it, put it on their plate every night. Even if they're not going to, even if they say, like, no way, not going to do it, just keep putting it on their plate every night, whether, whether it's um, just a tablespoon. I don't care. Um, I also encourage parents to get child-friendly utensils. Make the kids put it on their plate. They might just pick up one little leaf and put it <laughs> on their plate. But at least they did it, and at least they had that experience. Um, and there's so many fun utensils. We have those little dinosaur ladles that I'll have the kids scoop new casseroles up with and stuff like that. And they'll participate with it if, if we're consistent. 
a lot of parents, when they just, you know, put it on their plate, like you said, a lot of families have that clean plate rule. But why is it important not to force our kids to eat something they don't like? Yeah, so when we say you are going to eat that, that meal becomes a punishment. And we don't want to make food a punishment. We want to make it something that they enjoy. We want it to be their choice to eat it. Um, and this doesn't work for everyone. You know, some, some kids really do have sensory integration issues. They really have food, food difficulties. But for our typical developing kids, um, saying to them, like, you're going to eat this all or you're not leaving this table, that just makes them think, well, this must be horrible. If I'm going to get in trouble if I don't do it, it's like getting a shot. Like, I have to do it. I don't have a choice. And they're, they're, not, they're not going to enjoy it. And then the next meal just becomes the next fight. So even if you as a parent are eating healthy, mm -hmm. showing that good example for your kids, if they're still not doing it, what are, how can you help them make healthy choices? So having snacks that are healthy, but you also give them options. So instead of just saying, like, Here, here's what we're having, we're having yogurt-covered raisins, they're going to probably, they're probably going to tell you no thank you. Um, if you tell them, hey, you can have grapes or yogurt covered raisins, you give them that choice, they're going to feel like they have a little power to make a decision that is a healthy decision. And if you're doing all of these things and you're still struggling and having trouble with getting your kids to eat healthy and give things a try, feeding therapy is an, is an option. Yeah, is absolutely. So feeding therapy is... I go into the homes. I like it to be in the natural environment. I'll go into the home. I sit with the family. I look at what the family is eating because I don't want to serve, I don't want to make a kid eat something that the family's like, well, we don't eat that because mm -hmm. that's kind of pointless. Um, but go into the house and I will sit with the family, make a meal plan, teach them how to introduce new foods because sometimes just using these techniques is not enough. And that's why there are feeding therapists that can come into the house and kind of change up the game a little bit. A lot of great information. Thank you so much for coming in today. Yeah, thank you.